Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the author of JSF Made Easy and Hibernate Made Easy. I'm even the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com there. So head over and see what kind of great content we're working on. One of the things I want to talk to you today about was CDI and JSF. Boy, that's an awful writing right there. But I've been working on this JSF application, and it's just a little rock, paper, scissors game. So you can type in rock, paper, scissors, and we do all the required calculus to figure out whether there's a win, loss, or draw. It's real simple. Um, I've been creating the whole thing right there, compiling things, creating it in Notepad, compiling it with the Java C compiler. Uh, the key to it is really this gamebean.java class. But as you can see, this class is using the standard JSF annotations. That's fine. They work. They're fantastic. I love them. I write about them. Uh, I don't discriminate against them. But a lot of people these days are using CDI. CDI, the Context and Dependency Injection Specification, JSR 299, kind of came out a little bit after JSF 2.0 kind of got started. And basically what it is, it's, it's a way to do all these things like specify manage beans, specify the scope of a bean, um, plus a lot more. And so as a result, just because it, it provides all the same features and then some, people are using CDI. So Tomcat, out of the, right out of the box, doesn't support JSR 299. Uh, most Java EE 6, I don't think all compliant Java EE 6 application servers and better or better will, servlet engines don't necessarily have to. And so what do we have to do to get Tomcat to support CDI and JSR 299 annotations? Well, the first thing you got to do is you actually got to download the reference implementation of JSR 299. It's called Weld. So if you go over to the seamframework.org slash weld slash downloads, you can download weld 1.1. I've actually clicked the download and uh, actually downloaded into my downloads folder. You can see it's about 20 megs in size. There it is right there. I even extracted it, put it into a folder called weld 1.1. And as you can see, there's a couple of important folders there. One of them is the weld folder under artifacts, which has got the weld servlet.jar file, which we'll end up using in just a moment. And so what I want to do is I want to take this easy JSF application, which is currently working fantastic, and kind of recreate it, reconfigure it, so that it uses Weld and it supports JSR 299. So I'm going to take that, I'm just going to copy my existing folder there and paste it right there into the C drive. Once it's pasted, I'm just going to rename that from copy of easy JSF to underscore easy weld and then that gives us sort of something that we can compare to the original JSF application. And so what do I have to do in order to get this to support the CDI annotations? Well I guess one of the first things I can do is actually just write some code that has some CDI annotations in it. I got this canned over here so I'm just going to copy and paste this in. It's kind of cheating but as you can see I can add in the required imports javax.name.inject.name, javax.enterprise.context. This is all C, D, I stuff. You can see I'm using these two annotations here. Also notice that I specified that the game being implemented serializable. It's required by CDI. Uh, we should be doing it anyways, but JSF uh, doesn't really enforce the requirement of java.io.serializable. Uh, your CDI does. So make sure all of your POJOs implement serializable. So I'm going to save that and if I tried to compile it it wouldn't work because this these classes here need to reference an actual implementation. And Where can we get that implementation? Well if we actually go to that weld folder there's a little weld servlet.jar which includes all of the important classes that are needed to support JSR 299 inside of a web application. So you can see this is actually a conglomerate of different class files. I mean, there's stuff from Google in here, there's stuff from Java Sys, there's stuff from, uh, geez, JBoss, as you would imagine. Uh, the key is there's also Java X stuff. So there's all of our CDI 299 stuff. So we need to take that weld servlet.jar file, copy it, chuck it into that lib folder of our easy weld application. So now we can actually link to those files at runtime. However, we're still not out of the woods yet because right now our 
Tomcat application wouldn't know that we've got all this weld stuff in there. So the next step is to actually go into your web.xml file. This is the deployment descriptor for the web module and basically have it tell the Tomcat server, look, um, we've got a couple of components that are going to be listening for JSR 299 requests and linkages and stuff like that. So there's a little listener element that you can add in that comes from the JBoss Weld implementation. You have to add that into your web.xml file. Let me make sure I get it into the right spot. Save that file. Now when this particular module loads, my easyweld.war file loads, well, we're going to load a listener that's going to make weld work. The other thing that weld needs actually is something called a beans.xml file. And we're not really going to use it, but the weld implementation requires it. So we need to put a blank beans.xml file right inside this webinf folder. So I'm going to actually create the file first. I call it beans.xml, all lowercase letters. And I've got the hacked out code here that just uses, you know, just has the XML version and namespace and junk like that. It's sort of required. There it is. There's no beans in there. We're not really using weld. We're just sort of using its implementation of CDI at this point. And I think that's about it. I typically forget a thing, forget a step. So I updated my game bean. I added in the weld servlet.jar file. I updated the web.xml file. I put in an empty beans.xml file. Well, I guess the next thing I'm going to have to do is actually compile this darn code. And so I've got a hacked out, a pre-written compile line here. Just I'm just using the Java C compiler. I'm not doing anything crazy. So I'm going to move into my easy welds. WebINF classes folder. I'm going to paste in my little Java C command. The only thing I'm going to make sure I do, uh, the one that I'm using references the old easy JSF, so I'm just going to change that. As you can see, it doesn't work if I accidentally click. Didn't need to do that. Make sure I'm referencing the easy weld folder here. And I'm going to compile everything in my Call Mackenzie JSF folder using the Java compiler. Now everything should work. I noticed before it couldn't find session scope because I was referencing a folder that didn't have the weld servlet.jar file. But right now everything is compiled, which means I'm capable of actually linking to the class files at design time. Now I'm going to war up my application. By going into that, oh, not easy JSF. Going into my easy weld folder, using the Java jar utility to take all the files in this folder and all of its subfolders and put it into a war file, which I'm actually going to name easy weld.war. You know what, actually, I'm going to actually make a quick change. I'm just going to edit my index.html page and just sort of kind of write using weld. Just kind of say, hey, I'm using weld. And then that way I know that it's actually not the old one that's being used. So since I made that change, I'm going to have to redeploy the war file. Now I think my Tomcat server is running. And since my Tomcat server is running, I'm going to, I'm actually going to shut the thing down. I always like to just be safe. So I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to delete the easy weld that was just deployed because it was running. Now start the whole mess up again by just invoking the startup command from the Tomcat bin folder, which is a standard Tomcat. I haven't done any configuration on that Tomcat server since it's since it was unzipped and installed on my machine. The only thing I've set is the uh, Java Home, I believe. And so that's running, and now I should be able to go to the landing page for the weld application. And so I'm changing this from Easy JSF to Easy Weld because that's the name of my WAR file. I get a little, hey, things aren't running quite yet, message. 
and I may just need to be patient for a moment. Oh, you know what? I deleted Easy Weld and didn't throw it in there. So, silly me. The Easy Weld.war file is there now. In just a moment, we should see Tomcat trying to deploy this application and give it a context. There it is. It looks like it's deployed. And now we should be able to get rid of this 404 error, come in, and magically see our Easy Weld application. It says using Weld. Right now it's just displaying HTML. That doesn't impress me. What happens if I press rock? We tie, because the server always picks rock. Paper, it's a win. And scissors, it's a loss. And so let's end on a win here. Click on paper. We end up getting a win, and we know that our application is working using Weld, using JSR 299, using CDI annotations. Anyways, that's uh, just an overview of how you can use CDI and or JSR 299 on Tomcat, on Tomcat 7, in your JSF applications without having to move to a Java EE server. It's a couple little configuration files, but overall, in the grand scheme of things, it's not too much work. So anyways, that's about it for this tutorial. Go check out Hibernate Made Easy. If you like the tutorial, you're going to love JSF 2.0 madeeasy.com. And as I said, I'm also hanging out over on the server side. So if you have any questions, head to the server side. You can even find me over on Java Ranch. But for now, happy JSF programming.